Uh, hello, this is a note in about another feature of the OpenCPN plugin, Celestial Navigation plugin, and that is uh, uh, right here. We're going to talk about the find function, and if I click open, I I've got some stars here. If I click this open, here's a find function. And this is when we're going to talk about find. So what that means, what how that what that does, and and I should point out this is probably the most the, the function of the program that you would use the most because even if you're not doing celestial navigation for navigation for actual navigation, you will use this function to test your to calibrate your compass to to double check your compasses. And uh, modern boats have lots of compasses, and they're got, not going to agree. And then you can use these celestial easy celestial observations to verify which compass is right. So in in a sense, the most common use of celestial navigation in modern times is to check a compass. And this is what this find function is for. So on other programs, it's called pre-compute. But what you do is you give it a latitude and a longitude, and you tell it a body, and a, and there's a time up here too. We got to enter a time, so we're entering a position and a time, and it's telling telling us the height. This is the angular height above the horizon. And this is the bearing. This is the number we want. It's the true bearing of the body. And so, uh, and so that is, um, that's the function that we're after. Now, and then why do you want it besides, besides a compass check? If you are doing celestial, one of the, the other things that comes up is uh, you know, just finding a body. Not so much the stars. We have lots of tricks for finding the stars. But for finding, uh, finding the moon in the daylight, a daylight sky, sometimes a white moon in a white sky. It's just really hard to find. And so you can just push these buttons here and it'll tell you exactly which height and direction to look. Same way with uh, if the sun's behind the clouds, this can tell you uh, even which way to start concentrating on the sky, hoping the sun will peek out. But again, the main job is just compass checks during the day, using either the sun or in the evening using stars. And you can use any star. So that is the, the process. Um, now, let's look, uh, I want to just, uh, before I come back and look at details of this, I have a note here that I made. Let's see, where is it? Uh, move this here. Uh, let me go over here, maybe here. Oh, yeah. So I'll put a reference to this. This is an article about this process, checking a compass with the sun. With the sun. Now, you can, with a star, you just look at it, and you have to take a bearing and line things up and so forth. But with the sun, you would do it often with a shadow. You have a, a pin, shadow pin in, the, in a, this a binnacle mounted compass. And then this direction here, you can read with the shadow. You wait till the angle's right, so this shadow comes right across there nicely. And you read that, you add 180 degrees to that, and that is the compass bearing to the sun. Then we go back to this plug-in and calculate the true bearing to the sun. And then we calculate from our known DR position and time an accurate magnetic variation. And that we can do very accurately. Uh, there is a uh, plug-in. Let's see. There's a program from the U.S. Geomagnetic uh, Agency. I forget exactly. Oh, Geomagnetic Agency, I guess. Uh, there's a plug-in, I mean a, um, a function, Geomag, and you can download that. And that's described in this link, which I'll put in the description as well. But there's a, uh, let's go back to OpenCPN. That's this plug-in right here. And that's a real easy one. I just clicked that. That's called a WMN. That's probably World Magnetic Model, maybe. I'm guessing something like that. And so look how easy this is. This does fancy things, and it'll plot, uh, you know, plot the magnetic variation lines and so forth. But for now, it's, it knows where the boat is. That's its position right here. And, uh, that's, and it says the variation at that boat at this time and date is... Um, Variation, oh, variation at the cursor, right, and variation at the boat, and here's the boat. That's 16.3. So you can test that. Let's do a quick diversion. I'm going to go to that website here, and I'm going to type in this 14, 19.2. You can type it in that way, and type it in that way, northwest. Hit 1948, or 19, uh, 2018, 11.9, nine. that's today's date. Calculate, and it comes back, and you see... This is the model, 2015. That's the data they're going to use up until about, I think, 2020 is the next time. Yeah. See, the models. Th th this program, for example, this plug-in that we have here, we're going to have to update that 
in about uh, two years. Uh, next year or the year after, you have to update that plugin. This model is updated every every uh, ten years, and uh, so there you are, uh, 16 degrees, 18 minutes east. Uh, well, they say 17, but that's that's close enough. So there you go. So uh, so the point about that is that we can always know with this open CPN and have that plug-in. We always know very precisely the variation, therefore we can check the compass. So what the job now is to is to, for us to make a quick check just to be sure that this plug-in is calcul I mean not this plug-in, this function find is calculating the right values for us. And so let's take that and just go to like here's a Pollux. And so you put in a time and I did a bunch of test cases. So that is, let's see Oh, wow. I've got so many pictures here. Well, here's the site. Uh, oh, okay. Here it is. I'll put that link in there, too. I picked a time, 2018, and there's a reason for this particular time, and that'll come up in another video. But it's 218, 2018, November 1st, 12 hours, 0 minutes, 0 seconds, 38 north, 124 west. Now, that's not exactly where that boat was, but that doesn't matter. Get data. Okay, so there, then this tells you, this is like what we call in our course, the navigator, Celestial Navigator's Dream Machine, this little table right here. And again, I'll put a link to that. We have a shortcut to it, starpath.com slash USNO. And you get here, and it tells you the bearing of all these things. So we got 38 north, 124 west, uh, 12 zero. So here's, here's a bunch of bodies right there and here is the height that that's finder function this finder function should tell us with this data it should tell us that number and that number for all these bodies okay so that's that and so then what I've done here is uh, uh, put them all in a spreadsheet and I'm just going to show you the punchline here so these are all in a spreadsheet and then I went and calculated them all with the finder and so forth but here is just look at spot checking these so the the main thing for your compass checks here's the main point that azimuth that it's computing is spot on it's right on the money so that's perfectly good way then to check your compass that's that's confirmed now as far as the height that it predicts the heights off a little bit and I I think I understand why they just haven't it was meant just to find it it wasn't meant to do celestial analysis or anything. It was meant just to find it. So I think some shortcuts were rounding off and some of the numbers were done. But the, the actual HCs seem to be off, you know, as much as 10 minutes, 5 minutes. It's not going to affect finding it, right? Finding it you do with degrees or many degrees. But the main thing is for the compasses, that has to be spot on. And that is spot on. So those numbers you can be confident are right. So let's just look at a couple of nuances of using this thing. Here is the site and so say find. Now um, this is the boat. That's the boat and the check marks in the boat and so presumably that's right but I don't have I don't I don't have any way to check it in the boat so I'm going to shut the boat off and then close it so just to see what's going on. Now I come back you see when that and this is look this is this is not right so we have no idea nothing's checked so these are all zero. I don't know what these are. I'm just going to say done and then open it again. So now it comes back and this is the way it behaves. But that doesn't matter. So let's get concentrating on what we care about. And we care about, let's go back, we care about the, um, oh that's interesting. This program you're not going to input any place here. This the way he does the celestial with this uh, DR plugin. You don't actually input your DR position at all, so we just have to put in what we want. So I'm going to say find, and we know what we want. I want this at 38.0 north. Whoops! Oh gosh, what did I do? 38, 38.0, and I, oh now, and here's the other thing: longitudes in the west are minus, and I want it 124.0. So that's the data that we've got. We've got from the, uh, from the observatory here, you see, 38 north, 124 west. And that's where we've got all this real data. And you can do this yourself. So now then, let's see. Okay, so this is 70, says that this body, oh, let's double check the time, you see. I'm going to say okay on this because you've got to double check the time, right? So we, and the date, November 1st, November 1st. 
12 0 0 0 that's all okay now we go back to the site and we go back to find and so look see what it did we don't care it doesn't do that right but we don't care we just put in minus 124 and you see it's fixing it you see watch watch this number here if I put in a 4 here you see 4 4 4 you see so it's doing it live so that's point zero and so there's the answers so this is what I've taken here I've taken this height and bearing and now where is this let me bring this over here and which one is this this is uh, uh, which one is that one that star was uh, I forget which one it was okay let me just close it and uh, close it uh, let me close it uh, forget one I okay I'm gonna pick one to top of the line at Hara because that's the top of the page isn't it yeah okay and then I go to the find and again it says that unusual behavior minus 124.0 and we've got numbers here definitely we don't want magnetic and we don't want that so there so now this I can bring up here and that's in Adhara. And you see these are the numbers. 22, 8, 2, 2, 7. 8, 2, 2, rounded to 7. 172, 27.9, rounded off. Okay, so that's the numbers are in here. And then, uh, then this went through here. So that's what I did for just all of these tables, all of these stars on this one particular day. And I'm confident then that it's doing the azimuth right. So this number is exactly right. The fact that these, this HC is off just a little bit is not important for doing the compass checks. We'll come back to that. Okay, that's done. And I think that is everything. So ZN is correct. I think that's all I'm going to do for that. There's other things we could talk about it, but that function, the pre-computer, the find function, is a very powerful tool, and that's worth having this, you know, if you're going off sailing, even if you don't have a section on the boat, you don't even have to have a section, and you don't plan to use Celestial for anything, you still want to have this tool here so you can check your compass. You can just point the boat at a star, some star low on the horizon, or a planet, or the sun, any time of day with a shadow and you can confirm and check the compass it works very well um, it's it's not theoretical it's a daily standard procedure ships do it uh, daily they do this sort of process daily okay that's the end